Kami pa rin mga nagkakaroon ng alinlangan ngayon uh, dahil bukod po dito sa kaso ng isang health worker natin na meron pong, um, well, namatay po siya dahil sa COVID eh marami rin pong nag-alinlangan dahil sa report na nagkakaroon daw ng blood clotting ang AstraZeneca vaccine. No? Pakilinaw po, ano ba talaga estado ng mga bakuna na available ngayon sa atin sa Pilipinas? Dr. Salvania, the floor is, the floor is yours. Hey, uh, thank you, uh, folks. Uh, thank you to everyone um, for inviting me here. Yung ano po natin, uh, yung nangyari po doon sa Europe, doon sa Astra, may report po na ma- nagkaroon ng blood clot uh, at may isa pong namatay. Uh, bagamat sa ngayon, yung European Medicines Agency, after their investigation, sabi naman mukhang hindi naman po talaga related. Uh, bagamat yung mga countries na nakareceive nung same batch uh, nung Astra vaccine na yon, nag-post rin po sila para ma-review lang po nila. Pero ang WHO po ay uh, nagsasabi na patuloy po yung pagbakuna uh, dahil uh, delikado po talaga kung magkaroon ng COVID ang mga tao. Um, so for now, wala namang uh, abiso na mag-stop po tayo dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung uh, paggamit po natin ng Astra dito. Yung doon naman sa isang namatay na healthcare worker, pina, pinariwanag na nga po ni Dr. Logo. And actually, this underlines that uh, doctors and healthcare workers are really in clear and present danger habang tuloy-tuloy po itong ating COVID-19. And so the sooner we can get the protection, sabi nga ni Dr. Logo, two to three weeks, palang bago magsimula itong ating protection um the sooner we give it to them the more healthcare workers uh, will will be protected mga 240,000 na po at ay nabigyan natin ng first dose and hopefully we can give them their second dose uh, once it's appropriate and those people will have a minuscule almost non-existent risk of death once fully protected na po ang, uh, uh, against severe disease okay thank you dr savania So, nung time na nagpabakuna yung uh, tao, um, when was this and k- kailan po ito? Uh, March 4 po siya nagpabakuna. Uh, March 4. And he, is, she, he or she is a healthcare worker, no? She is a healthcare worker po. 47-year-old female. And hindi po parang standard natin na dapat may test or may PCR test or antigen test to know the status of the person. Uh, hindi po yun ano hindi po yung pung doing a screening for antigen test is not a prerequisite to vaccination oh, kanya nga oh. po tayo meron tayong health standard meron po tayong ano uh, health assessment form na you have to be honest in answering it they also will ask you whether you are manifesting any symptoms of covid within the last two weeks or three weeks or even If you were diagnosed to have COVID in the last three months, po, yun po yung sir, yeah, sir. From a layman's point of view, no, and of course this is in the context of vaccine confidence. Na parang Opo. andaling idikit ng mga tao na parang eh binakunahan nga tapos na matay. So how do we parang ihihiwalay, sir, if it's all <clears throat> possible, na hindi vaccine ang naging cause ng kanyang death, and in fact it was. COVID. Paano po natin naihiwalay yung ganong uh, findings? Uh, usually po, yung pong committee na namin, yung National Adverse Event Following Immunization, yung pong national, no? and then the regional, yung RIFEC, they, they usually investigate any adverse event no? following immunization and we, ide- we would like to identify the causality assessment. Uh-huh. When we do when we do the causality assessment, it's a systematic review, which aims to determine the likelihood of a causal association uh, between the event and the vaccine. Kung baga po pag nagbakuna, tinitingnan po namin kung pung ito ay merong pung pwede natin ma associate don. Tapos it will take several ano po it will take some time to prepare the causality assessment. Tapos tinitingnan po natin lahat ng mga We conduct the investigation, yung po mga sinabit na papers, in-evaluate namin. Nire-review din po namin yung mga clinical records, tapos kinocompile po namin yung, yung mga information. And finally, the results of causality assessment will be released po, depending on the decision of all the experts po. It's usually, it's a unanimous decision. And from what we have gathered, 
the patient could have been incubating at that time nung pong binakunaan siya. Wala po pong symptoms eh. Parang na-expose po siya, nag- nagkakaroon na po siya ng Manif- nagkakaroon po siya ng manifestation nung pa after a day or two pa po eh. Hindi po mm-hmm. doon mismo na ano, well po siya doon sa day na nakunaan siya. Mm-hmm. So sir, um, sorry if I, I hope you can indulge me. In other words sir, yun pong ikinamatay niya ay hindi po yun kasama sa mga established na side effects ng bakuna. Hindi po, yung pong bakuna hindi po makakapag-cause ng infection. Definite okay, po yun. Okay. Okay. So, hindi po yung makakapag-contribute dun sa kinamatay po niya. Remember, yung okay. kumbakuna na binibigay natin ay safe, tapos inactivated po siya. Wala rin pong pagkakataon na magmultiply yung mikrobyo na nandun kasi patay na po yung mikrobyo. Ang gagawin lang po nun, mag-stimulate po ng ating uh, immune system, uh, immune system. Pro- to produce an antibody and at the same time, uh, memory cells po para second exposure will be will have an adequate immune or robust immune response in Pusha. Okay. Sir, uh, spokesperson, spokes, okay, can I go to Dr. Vega, please? Go ahead, please. Hmm. Dr. Vega, good morning, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Sir, good afternoon, sa NCR data, you mentioned some some data in passing, no? But oh. I I don't know if you have it with you, pero can you give us a, this, uh, statistics, po, sir, of the available uh, number of ICU beds, isolation beds, and ward beds in terms of number and then percentage of occupancy? Uh, in, in terms of uh, numbers uh, for the NCR, uh, generally we have uh, for the COVID isolation beds and the ward beds that we have uh, dito sa mga hospitals, mm-hmm. that would total uh, roughly about 7,000. And okay. uh, 52% of that is occupied. This is both public and private. Right. Okay. For the intensive care units, uh, to uh, we have almost uh, close to 679 uh, mm-hmm. ICU beds. So when mm-hmm. we say that 64% of this is being utilized, it means that the balance now is still free. But uh, there's a there's a, a qualification here because there are that's the general uh, NCR data that we have for uh, the. Uh, a hospital uh, care utilization rate because this is really a, a, a metrics for uh, looking at the capacity of the health system. So, but merong ano din, Joseph, uh, areas uh, wherein the, especially in Quezon City, Makati, and Taguig, wherein the hospital utilization rate is already bordering on the high risk area. That's about 80, 80 percent. No, some, some so yun yung yun yung binabantayan ho namin kasi mataas talaga lalo na sa both public and the private. Pero in a general uh, percentage, it's still uh, on the moderate risk level for the ICU at 64%. Sir, uh, sorry, um, oh. ICU beds, you said 64% is being utilized so therefore yeah, 30-ish, right. 30% are available? Yes, yeah, so 30% na lang available for the sec 79. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. So, how would you describe po, the current uh, surge that we are experiencing? How would you characterize it? Well, uh, compared last year, uh, wherein we did, wala talaga tayong experience of uh, tackling and uh, responding initially, we're in a better off situation right now. Because, uh, first of all, uh, alam na ng mga healthcare workers on how they should behave and also the institutions in terms of bed allocation. Kasi alam nila na, that there is now a mandate coming from the Department of Health that uh, 20% of this must be, pri- uh, but be allocated in private and almost 30%. So in other words, we have in- improved capacity compared with last year. Second, uh, we, na- nagkaroon na rin kami ng uh, uh, setup talaga with a one hospital command wherein we were able to uh, do a uh, you know coordinated care and proper referral and even triaging and providing uh, medical direction to all patients uh, calling for uh, assistance pangatlo uh, nagkaroon din kami tayo ng ano ng, pra, ng together partnership with the DPWH na nag-increase tayo ng uh, beds through modular hospitals in fact sa kidney ano uh, not kidney but the lung center Naka, nakagawa po kami ng, together with the DPWH ng modular hospital 
capable of handling moderate and severe. So about 25 beds. And uh, meron kaming i-operationalize by uh, at, uh, two weeks from now, yung nagawa na sa QI. That's 110 beds uh, capable of handling moderate and severe. So nakita talaga namin ang pangangailangan since last year sa number of beds dito, especially with the ICU, dito sa Metro Manila. So we have also improved on uh, several hospitals nag, through the Bayanihan. Alam mo sa Bayanihan uh, to recover Act as one, meron kaming nabigyan tayo ng mga resources and uh, na-allocate <coughs> namin to sa mga government hospitals like uh, Lung Center or uh, oh, Jose Rodriguez Memorial Center na mag-increase ang kanilang capacity for ICU. So ito yung ano, ginawa namin improved capacity compared with last year. So mm. kung tanongin mo kami, I think we are better prepared uh, for this situation right now compared last year. We we, we know what's uh, effective uh, in terms of public health standards, interventions, localized lockdowns by uh, the local government unit. And we know that uh, mayroon ng experience among healthcare workers on how to go about it. We have we have we have PPEs already. Uh, the healthcare workers are getting vaccinated. So compared with last year, we're better off, we're better prepared, and we can, we can keep on improving and uh, adjusting to the changing times. So right now, yung Okta is saying there's a 15.9% attack rate in NCR, and some cities have more than 20% attack rate. My question, sir, is, um, is it possible to plot that given all these attack rates in the cities, would you be able to determine kung kailan mauubos yung ating uh, mga hospitals? Actually, if you take at the mathematical uh, yun nga, computation, no? assumptions by Okta, matatakot ka talaga. Can you imagine if you have 11,000 and 6,000 and you have uh, just uh, a number of beds dito sa, inten- sa, sa, ano, NCR. sa NCR? So, uh, the way I look at it, these are alarm bells, sound bells talaga. If you don't do nothing, talagang mahuhulog kayo sa ganun. Uh, and the assumption is only based on mathematical projections. But mm-hmm. more important is how we are going to respond to the increasing crisis right now. And if we are able to do that, if we are able to make sure that uh, the public uh, uh, adheres to minimum health standards, and without, ko na minimum, eh. you have to enhance it. Eh. If, if there is a double masking, that you have to double mask, you have, you have to do all of the things that uh, the min, minimum health standard requires, and plus the executive power of the local government units to provide yung atawag nilang uh, granular lockdowns or zonal containment because this is very effective and we have seen this last year paano natin napababa yung august to september october november it was just because of the uh, strong enforcement of the local government units in terms of making sure that they are able to contain and mitigate the uh, transmission of the virus in their community uh, mm-hmm. very active po ang mayors natin and we can i can attest to that and they can do it this is just by executive uh, function. If we don't do anything, then the projection will be uh, on track. Okay. Sir, short question. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Vega, nice to see you again. Sorry po. Um, Secretary Roque, just two short questions for you. Okay, go ahead. Sir, in relation to the discussion with Dr. Vega, um, what happens no, in April, assuming that uh, there are no interventions and do you think na dadating tayo sa point na mauubos yung mga hospitals natin or you don't think that will happen? And second, just a little comment on yung mini launch shuttle sir na coalition, yung isang bayan, so uh, palace perspective. So on those two things, last na lang. Well, una-una po, no? gumagawa nga po tayo na hakbang para wag magkatotoo yung mga projections. No? And I think um, the local government units already know what to do. So I'm confident na mapapabagal po natin. In fact, nakikita na natin na bumagal na, no? Hindi na po siya 5,000 plus, nasa 4,000 na yan. And I think we can further slow it down, no? Gradually, no? 3,000 and then 2,000, back to the 1,000 level. Pero if that doesn't happen within April, fix po ang ating mga formulas on uh, quarantines. So kung talagang maging critical po ang ating uh, um, healthcare utilization rate, then uh, that may justify um, changing our quarantine status but hopefully not po, no? because uh, I think the people and local government units and uh, everyone now is contributing para mapabagal na yung pagkaratang sakit. 
hindi ko po alam kung ano yung one nation na sinasabi ninyo. Hindi ko pa siya nabasa anywhere, no? Um, sila Justice Scarpio, Ombudsman Morales, and si Secretary Del Rosario have launched a parang coalition I'm not calling them as opposition parang to provide maybe an alternative to in the, in the, in the coming elections. Well, napa, napakaagap po para mag, mag-usap ng eleksyon at politika. Yan naman po aming sinasabi palagi. Isang tabi muna po ang politika habang nandito po ang pandemya. Kami po sa administrasyon, uh, gawa muna uh, pandemya muna bago politika. Thank you for your time, sir. Dr. Vega, thank you. Guest, thank you, sir. Salamat. Salamat, Salamat Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. Next question, Yusek Rocky. Yes, uh, Secretary from Lanes Capanti of GMA News Online. Is the palace supportive of uh, vaccine czar Galvez's suggestion of administering uh, Sinovac on senior citizens even if this suggestion goes against the recommendation of FDA which said Sinovac is only for clinically healthy people aged uh, 18 to 59 years old? Very supportive po dahil alam natin na napakadaming bansa na sa taiktig ang gumagamot ng, uh, gumagamit ng Sinovac para sa senior citizens and uh, uh, I think steps will be taken to ask the um, local representative of Sinovac to present additional data sa FDA para mabago po yung EUA na inisyo ng FDA. Kailangan lang naman po ng FDA additional data. Okay, second question po niya. Former Health uh, Secretary Esperanza Cabral said, the country is now 10 steps back from square one with over 61,000 active COVID-19 cases, which is uh, the same level as July 2020, and which government and private sector not in the position to spend for uh, subsidies again, just like ECQ last year. Do you agree with her observations? Well, uh, I love Dr. Cabral, but I will let one of her students respond to her, Dr. Edsel Salvania. Ah, yes, thank you, uh, uh, Spokes. Um, I think that, um, well, I also love uh, <laughs> Secretary Cabral and she is uh, very close to me. Po. Um, in this case, we probably have a professional difference in this uh, manner because uh, as I have already mentioned uh, in, in many of my posts, we know much better how to take care of uh, COVID-19. Po. Um, uh, I haven't had a death uh, since January among my patients and I've had very sick patients including doctors in the ICU. So I think that uh, from a completely medical standpoint, uh, we're in a better position. Mas marami po tayong gamot. We have dexamethasone, we have remdesivir, we have um, we have tocilizumab uh, as well. Um, we also have uh, right now, uh, like with, with uh, USEC Vega, we have this one hospital command which uh, is really coordinating. Kasi yung problema talaga natin right now is we need to make sure that uh, patients who need to be in the hospital do have hospital beds. Uh, the truth is, if these are all mild cases, um, it's not going to, ano, hindi naman tataas yung death rates natin. Eh. Ang problem is, about 50% of the mild cases are also admitted in the hospitals, which uh, pushes out uh, some of the beds that can be used for severe. And so, yung pag-utilize po natin ng mga ating mga TTMFs for the mild cases, um, dapat mas gawin natin yun para we can reserve the hospital beds uh, for the severe cases. Because the severe cases, yun yung mamamatay if we don't have hospital beds for them. And like I said, we already know how to take care of severe COVID. So, two-prong po yung approach. We really need to decrease the number of cases that we have right now. And we already know what works. We have face masks, we have face shield, we have enhanced contact tracing. And the second thing is we need to make sure that for those who do develop severe disease, that we continue to have hospital beds open for them because we can take good care of them. And mas mababa na po yung mortality compared to last year na left and right po talaga na mamatay because we didn't really know what we were doing. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong patuloy na pagkangkilik sa ating tahanan at pagsubaybay sa mga kaganapan na nangyayari at sa ating tagumpay na natatamu dyan sa Indonesia. Hopefully, we will see you again in our next update. God bless.